Hey, everybody, this is Jimmy Psycho, and you are listening to the Devil You Know podcast. And we be hanging and banging, and the girls be singing, hey, hey, in the house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's up, John? What's happening, man? Uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, craziness, man. It's uh, episode thirty-seven. How did we get this far? I don't know. I'm not even. I'm just. There's no looking back now. How's uh, and, poor? And, huh? You know what? Uh, we we hit one thousand likes this week, man. Yeah! Yay! Thousand! Woo! Yeah, we're over that. It's actually pretty cool. Thank you, everyone right. who's liking us. It's awesome. We do appreciate it, and of course the uh, input and psycho emails and all that kind of and the good stuff. emails, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's Port St. Lucifer, man? How you doing? Ah, uh, good, good. Uh, I went snorkeling today, so I was in the ocean. That's always good. Yeah, <laughs> can't complain. You know, it's uh, I mean, like everywhere, it's it's still hot. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it's still cooking out there. Oh man, it's really hot. If you get it's not like you get a group of people at a, at a pool party out here. It's no longer a pool party. It, it's like, it's human soup is what it is. It's so oh. freaking hot, dude. You start to Hopefully, boil. Uh, you don't have too many riots out there and, and any uh, rallies. And- <clears throat> well, they did have a thing down in Phoenix uh, a few nights ago. And um, I was talking to a police officer friend of mine about it. And uh, it's dangerous. They won't like now the, the, the Phoenix police, they have a, a thing in place, which is probably good. But they will not go to eat any type of call without a partner, because yeah. there oh, yeah, there's absolutely. all these threats are being made and all these things. And I mean, how dumb do you have to be? Yeah, to, last <laughs> last week uh, that that horrible uh, shooting in Dallas with all the police that were shot. I mean, we were recording at the time. So yeah, you know, that's right. Yeah, and we, I love how they took them out. Cast, oh, a couple of cops, and then wow, it just went crazy. Yeah, yeah, wow, little, yeah, love little, the robot. Call of Duty style, just rolled a freaking thing over there. <laughs> Bam, you're gone. Enough. Yeah, and you know, I, uh, I, <clears throat> I'm blown away by how many people are, are kind of upset about about this about the robot. You know, like is this, this a really a, a hum, humane way to to you know just go in and kill the man? Oh, you mean the killer? Yes. Fucking blow them up. <laughs> yeah, here's what the thing. You know, you ever find really? out that most people that are that are saying, uh, talking anything about, uh, be, you know, be against that that tactic are the ones that are sitting in their homes or their offices, all all nice and uh, uh, protected and stuff, away from this whole thing. Get in there. Put you know what? Put a pull yeah. a pull, pull, pull vest on. Go down there and hang out with the Please. police that are being shot at. Let's see how you feel afterward. Yeah. He, you're, he's gonna go send to the fucking pot. You know what I mean? So knock it off. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Craziness happening, man. I don't know what the whole. How are you feeling now about uh, this whole uh, Black Lives Matter? Because I, you know, I, I, it's funny is that um, I brought this up uh, a couple couple weeks ago when we had Adam on, uh, and we started off the conversation where I said that that you know there's few people who were comparing it to a terrorist organization. Now I see it all over the news. They're calling it that. So yeah, and I even checked out a couple of their different sites that they got and I'm just looking on and seeing, you know, what is this about? I didn't want to say too much about them if I really didn't do the research, you know. So I look at stuff and I've noticed that they have this schedule of uh protests in all these major cities in the US coming this Friday. Um which I guess by the time this airs tomorrow, uh right around anywhere from 4 p.m. in your town to 5 p.m. all over the place at the same time. Um I don't I don't know about this, man. I really don't think it's going to be a cool thing at all. No, I, you know, yeah, there's going to be more trouble. Like, you know, I, I had somebody explain to me for a while there, you had like a lot of people who were upset about, you know, oh, well, it should be all lives matter or whatever. And then somebody explained this to me, and I thought at the time that this explanation was good. They said that when somebody says save the rainforest, it doesn't mean fuck all the other forests. It just means that they're particularly take care of this rain for us, you know. Yeah. And so at the time, I was like, okay, yeah, that that, that sounds reasonable, but it's just getting out of hand now. I, mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you, then you have people that uh, like for this for this these particular protests. What they're about is like what they're claiming to be the innocent slangings of 
uh, a couple of guys. And and on the other side of the fence, you got people saying, well, you know, they're criminals, you know, or they yeah. reached for a gun and had it on his lap and the cop felt, you know, uh, that he was in danger. I mean, there's all sorts of things. And Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, the one guy... Uh, uh, I think it was the Alton Alton Sterling. Like they 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 saw the video where it looked like he was definitely reaching for something in his pocket. The other guy, not so much. There was really no vindication for the police. So the guy who was killed and his kid was in the back seat, and somehow the lady was just calm as can be. Oh, officer, I think you just killed my husband. <laughs> like what the fuck? I, I don't. That was weird. They must man. have just gotten through that. a fight or something because she didn't seem too concerned about it. That was weird. I don't know. I, I, but it's all. I weird. mean, it, she was probably also wanting to make sure she didn't get shot herself. But, um, but yeah. So I mean, there. I, it, obviously, there's, there's, of course, uh, occasionally, yeah. <clears throat> there's going to be, there's going to be an accidental. There's going to be a kill that shouldn't have happened. But there's also, I mean, who wants that job? You know, who wants to take the chance? You know, there's so many videos out there you can see of, of a cop who tries to stroll up uh, cautiously to a car to have somebody in, you know, blink of an eye will whip out a gun and start firing at him. You know, so yeah, I mean, it's it, it's you know. a scary job I don't want, and uh, it's crazy. You know, I've seen in, in another thing I, I saw this um, reverend that was leading a couple of the marches. Uh, this was a while back. This is before these two things happened. And they invited him here uh, to Arizona, here in Phoenix, uh, to Maricopa, um, to uh, a certain police headquarters, to do these little scenarios. You know, let's put you in a scenario and uh, see if you fire this gun. And I'm sure he had thoughts about it beforehand, where he's like, "Oh, I wouldn't," or he's going to try to try to try uh, to you know act one way or something. But they showed the video, and you can see it on on YouTube. The uh, you know, they showed a scenario where there's a you know suspicious guy and this and that. And he's coming up around the car, and the guy pulls out a gun, and 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 it's, they're all fake, of course. P- fires off some rounds, and the guy, the reverend's dead. He's like, I would have died at that point. Um, then yeah. another scenario where there's two guys fighting, and one of them's like, What? What do you want, cop? And walks over to him and comes closer, doesn't comply to anything, and he's twice the size of him. And that reverend ended up pulling off four or five shots. Yeah, and the guy acted like he got shot, went down. The other guy's like, "Why'd you do that? Why'd you do that?" And he's coming at him, and it, that's the thing. When these people, all these people that are complaining, I'm, I'm, they're just doing it from the comforts of their own home, and they walk out in the exactly. street, and they've got this this herd mentality and this this mob mentality. Um, it just it just escalates, and it's it, none of these people realize yeah. what it's like to be out there on the street as a police officer. And if they did, yeah, I mean, they wouldn't I mean, be out there. I, I agree. You know, like I absolutely, I feel like um, I think we have to look at that from both aspects. It is it is easy for us as white men from the comfort of our home to say, I don't know what it, you know, I, I don't know what it's like to be a black man. I I get that, but I also don't know what it's like to be a cop when you're always in danger, you know, by trying to protect you know the public. So I mean, you have to look at both sides. You can't just pick one side and say, well. Well, it's not fair on this side because it's not fair on both sides, you know. And yeah. I mean, there's there's plenty of uh, of widows of police officers, you know, who you know know that their husband went out to try and and, and make the world a better place and got killed yeah. for it. And guess what? Some of them are African American. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, we don't yeah. want to talk about that though. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of of Gary, Indiana. Uh, you know, it's it's been murder murder capital plenty of times over the decades. And um, I I grew up there when I was a little kid, and uh, me and a little neighbor kid who was a black kid. I mean, we rode big wheels around the block, and it it never occurred to me that <laughs> there was anything different. You know, like you know, we were just kids playing. You know, he had a big wheel and I had one. That's all that mattered. You know. <laughs> Sweet. I used to love the big wheel. I used to have a green machine. Remember those? Oh God, I hate trying to drive a green machine, man. Oh, I was a pro at it. <laughs> I had a nice hill on my street. It was great. <laughs> All right. Well, green lives matter. <laughs> green machine lives matter. Yeah, I just, I don't get it. I, I just, yeah, you know, and then I, I read a couple of things out there, conspiracy, you know, conspiracy theorists are like, it's just going to give Obama an excuse to, you know, implement martial law and then there'll be yeah. no elections. Well, that's a possibility, yeah. but you know, are we going to live in fear like that? I mean, I don't know. No. It's weird. It's just... I just, I, you know, all I, all I hope for is that it doesn't affect me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> or, or anyone that <laughs> right, I, I like. Exactly. 
you know? <laughs> I know that's what I think too. As long as you're not blocking my way to work, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, as long as I got to get to where I got to go, uh, I don't got to run anybody over. You know, it's, you know, I don't have to stop anybody from attacking my loved ones or me. Uh, that's awesome. Do your thing. Do your dance. Do your yelling and screaming, kicking and crying. Whatever you want to do. Agreed. Right. Let's, cool. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's see what we get from all that crap. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. The Law of Gyps. Law number 17. Actions may speak louder than words. But decisions dictate the volume of both actions and words. Decision making is paramount to success. Poor decisions, lazy thinking, uncareful planning, and lack of preparation all may lead to failure, be it subjectively, objectively, or both. No amount of actions or words will ever make up for poor decisions. While there's no avoiding making an error due to natural human mistakes, bad timing, poor judgment, and so on. To make an effort to minimize those poor misfires will ultimately keep us going forward. Otherwise, we will ultimately hold ourselves back as individuals and prevent ourselves from taking actions which will lead us in the right direction on the left-hand path. Granted, proclamation of one's own goals is a great gateway to one's own personal fortitude. However, it can also lead one on a path of piss-poor pretentiousness if they demonstrate failure to deliver the goods when all is said and done. Hail Satan! This is Satan's Misty Tires. The skilled hands behind all the devilishly cute crocheted baphomets and other items now inhabiting the homes and altars of many of our Church of Satan members. We all know the TSA are assholes for taking Christopher Walken's satanic owl. Well, if you want to help him get it back, and even get one of your own, make your way over to iSatanist.com soon, because that is where you can find them. Each one is handmade by me, adorned with a fine The Devil You Know podcast patch, and even contains a special message from Mr. Walken himself. So, head on over to iSatanist.com in the coming weeks for some fine satanic owls, or follow my Satanist's Facebook page for any news on Baphomet, your satanic owls, or any other devilishly cute goodies. You know you want them. Hail Satan. All right, so for episode 37, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, John, I think this might be good for a lot of our, our newer listeners who maybe don't know uh, necessarily what Satanism is about. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's going to be an inter- interesting show. We have with us today non-Satanist and inquisitive mind, Grant Wallace, everyone. How are you doing, Grant? Pretty good. How are you? I'm excellent. Yeah, man. So you're you're basically uh, you're here because you are basically kind of interviewing us, so to speak, uh, or wanting to find out is this uh, is this for a project you're doing? Yeah, well, I, I I figure in most of life it's good to be knowledgeable. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people who have really sort of in my life kind of given me the um, passion to seek for knowledge uh, before making judgments and to just sort of look for discernment and truth about most things before you even really think in a certain way about really anything, be it race, nationality, religion, anything. Wow. Sure. And you're, how old are you, Grant? I'm uh, 18. Just really? Trying. And you think like that. That's amazing. Aren't you worried yeah. about what Kim Kardashian's doing or anything? Or playing <laughs> Pokemon Go? Oh, nope. I've, oh, my gosh. Don't get me started on that, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Um, cool. Yeah. So where do we start then yeah. for uh, for someone who who's actually not a member who doesn't know because you know and for a lot of our listeners we have we have listeners who are who are not COS members and who 
um, you know, they kind of are maybe just friends of ours that just listen to the show and they yeah. kind of pick up information by this. So for someone uh, who knows nothing about it, uh, I guess, I don't know, where do we, where do we start with this? Where's the, I'd say the beginning. We'll start in the beginning. In, in the beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this could be interesting. What, um, I guess, yeah, Grant, so why don't you fire away? Let's, let's just start where you think we should start with this. Start with questions or with just like a, an overall story or something like that? Your choice. Um, okay. So Surprise us. Because you said start in the beginning, you know I got to ask. Um, and I have done a little, bit of, a little bit of researching on this, and I know you guys are sort of, uh, in a way, from what I read, a lot like and very similar to atheists. But what is your belief and uh, understanding of the beginning, the start of it all? Just to sort of just sort of kind of blast away right there. Hmm. Well, I would. I guess are you talking about the beginning of existence of the universe? Yeah. I mean, because I mean, I would go with uh, the Big Bang. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as an atheist, I mean, we, we kind of believe in science. Yeah. yeah. And so that's going to be a uh, you know, as far as like, yeah, we we don't have any kind of a um, spiritual idea yeah. for the beginning the, the beginning is you know the big bang as far as as we know it and um you know all the way through to you know the forming of the universe and uh, evolution and yeah. i mean those are those are the beginnings for what we know which is like you said what most atheists would probably yeah uh, we don't we don't believe in some universal conscious cosmic mind that uh architected uh anything we we actually believe this is pretty much chaotic yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and sort of zooming forward, many many years, I guess you could say. How do you think that basic core belief affects um, what you guys stand for? And like your your, it's the nine sins of Satanism, the eleven rules of Satanism. I believe I saw on the official website when I was doing a little bit of research. Mm-hmm. How do you think that's affected that? Well. I think that the the nine satanic statements, the eleven rules of the earth, uh, which were all uh, created by LeVay and uh, codified by LeVay, called Satanism. I think uh, that is the byproduct of our carnality of our existence here. Yeah. Our, you know, the way that we, where we ended up at the here and now, where we're at now in life. These are things that have uh, been proven methods, proven. Um, things to live by a proven philosophy to live by where these things work for us. Yeah. And I, you know, also, I mean, it's just an observation, you know, Satanism is an observation of, of the natural. And so, I mean, everything that we discussed as far as, like we said, you know, what science tells us about the big bang, what science tells us about formation of life and um, like going through life to evolution and us being part of that chain, and we are animals, and we are part of um, this world. We're a part of this nature, and 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 our our belief system is really just observing that which is natural. And instead of trying to, I guess, paint thing something onto it all to help us better understand it, or to get it, and that's what religion <clears throat> tends to do. It tends to, I guess, paint its own version of what it wants it to be, rather than accepting what is. And we accept ourselves as animals. And, and part of you know this world and, and living in the moment and we're going to die and that'll be the end of it yeah and if I might add um, we uh, both of you have used I, mean, I know I know why you used it Dorinders, because Grant used it but you used the words belief system um, it's really not a belief system belief belief right. is uh, more of like a faith-based thing to us or spiritual gobbledygook but uh, we, we're more like of a like a fact-based system I guess yeah I yeah. guess I, I, just to, just to clear that up, but yeah, yeah. I hope that. I... And I, I mean, when I say belief, you can you can use it in two ways. Like I could say I believe. Um, I haven't looked at the clock in a while. I, can, I believe it's around six thirty, six twenty ish, so right. something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in science, or a better way to say it would be, I accept it. I accept. It. Yeah. Yeah. So. Or I place my trust within. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I, I've got one kind of weird question. I was looking out Go ahead, shoot. Through, uh, through those, once again, nine rules or, or no, it's the 11 rules of the earth and satanic the nine statements. Sa- sins of Satanism, right? Well, oh, there's yeah. uh, satanic there's, sins, yeah, and then there's sci- nine uh, satanic statements. Yeah, um, and I, I saw something mentioning 
magic. And I was uh. kind of curious about that. I didn't necessarily understand what was going on. Um, I can actually bring it up if you'd like me to. Was it spelled with a K or a C? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's an inside joke. Um, All right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, hold on. Let me find it real quick. I'm looking on my phone while I'm talking through the computer. Sure, take, take your time. Jumping, hurry up. Jumping a few steps ahead, but, but yeah. uh, that's okay. Alrighty. Yeah, just take us where your mind's at. <laughs> <laughs> all right. People love all this dead airspace. It's awesome. So yeah. <laughs> we'll put just some music in there. <laughs> 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 do, 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 do. Um. <clears throat> okay. Uh, number nine in the nine satanic sins. It says towards the end. In the lack of aesthetics, something about um, aesthetics is important in lesser magic and should be cultivated. That's just one line out of that. I'm mm-hmm. just curious what, what magic is really defined as in this uh, situation, since Le- you guys don't really believe in anything <clears throat> spiritual. Well, lesser magic, there's two, there's two types of magic, lesser and greater. Yeah. Lesser simply means, uh, it can mean um, how you look, right, how you sure. dress, how you conduct yourself, how you hold yourself, how you... Uh, portray yourself, um, how others portray you, and how you, you like give off that vibe. Um, any yeah. little thing that has to do with um, the powers of suggestion or manipulation when it comes to dealing with people, and it could be the words you say, the 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 looks you give, the 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 way you're dressed, anything like that. That's lesser magic. Um, I hope that helped a little bit. But greater magic yeah. would be more of a ritual thing, where there's actual. Uh, rituals taking place it's more of a grandiose um, psychodrama of uh, of ritual that would uh, serve certain purposes for us to attain the desires that we seek yeah and and i think uh, anton LaVey has uh he definitely defined it as uh you know as magic itself as uh any means that you change the situation that through you know normal means wouldn't have been effective you know so i mean it, like we said, lesser magic can be something as simple as, you know, knowing to put on a nice suit before you go to a job interview that could, you know, sway a person's decision about you. You know, there's little things like that, or you know, and big, you know, there's a lot of ways that that can be used. And, and both forms of magic, like we, like you said, it's basically just a way to change um, the things around you or your perception of it. All right, so you could call it almost like a life hack. In a way, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, yeah. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, it's not really a hack, though. It's really um, science, sort of looking, actually. Yeah. If you think about it, people are predisposed to certain suggesting suggestions and certain things, and they, um, you know, some people can be manipulated uh, to your benefit, and that's just that's nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Greater magic is obviously a little, little more uh, advanced than that. Grant, what religion are you? What do you consider yourself? Um, I am a Christian. Okay. And I have a, actually kind of an interesting sort of relationship with the church when it comes to that in some weird ways. But mm-hmm. uh, for the most part, I just I kind of I believe in Jesus Christ and stuff like that. And uh, and what makes you believe in Jesus? What makes you believe besides in your Jesus? parents? Yeah. What makes you? Oh. What do you, do you want me to go all the way into this? or? Hey, it could be interesting. I don't know. All right. Um, well, I was born in a Christian home, as most uh, most Christians. So was I. So was I. Yeah. Catholic, um, same crap. And uh, I, mean, I always just kind of... It's good. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'm just I, would just, I, would, I would read, and um, my dad would actually read me like the Bible stories when I was a little kid and stuff like that. And I would, uh, I would always hear my mom talking about this man talking about... Um, really in-depth study of theology and of just the biblical word and stuff like that and all. He would go into the Hebrew and the, in, the independent sentence structure and just find the differences in words and like the, the code throughout it all. And I was always kind of wowed by that in a way. And for a while, actually, um, I did become what you would almost, what you would consider basically an atheist. Huh. Uh, I went and I, I kind of started to doubt. I had my own issues with um, kind of getting what I want, doing what I want, and kind of the understanding of all that. And I guess I guess all people go through that, and it's really a uh, deciding factor in how you come out of it and what you believe. 
And you mean we, the, you're we talking kind of, uh, backsliding, of course, right? What do you mean backsliding? It's, that's what most Christians refer to at the time when you kind of get step out of it for a little while and as a rebellious nature, and then you, you, you're backsliding. That's an interesting word. I got to use that in the future. You've never heard that before. I thought you, you <laughs> never heard that. Christian home. <laughs> <laughs> All Christians know that word. What kind of Christian are you? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> it's pretty common. Ask Nathan Gray. He grew up in the same environment. <laughs> yeah, he's like, who's Nathan Gray? Um, I'll have to go ask around about that. I've never heard that, but yeah. Um, so I, I begin to doubt and stuff like that, and I I really because I'm I'm more of a scientific thinker, I guess. Hmm. I really you had to kind of prove it to me in a way, and I saw all of these these brilliant people like Stephen Hawking um, go through, and they would just completely tear things apart that I knew to be like fact from a very very young age that hmm. I knew to be fact. Right, right. Um, other what people you perceive might, not, as fact, might right. not know that to be fact as well. Yep. But um, I, I would see them just go through and just tear this apart. And I started to believe it in a way. I saw all these theories and I saw all of, uh, like the math I can't even still comprehend. I, I, think to my, I think of myself as decently good at math, but still it's like it's beyond even my comprehension yet. And still I would go and I would search and I was honestly just confused for a while. I was actually tormented, I would even call it, because everything that I knew and everything that I understood and then everything I was being taught were it completely – they were completely uh, conflicted against each other. They were mm -hmm. set apart from each other. Put to the test, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I did is I kept digging. And remember I told you about that, uh, that man that would go and search deeply and kind of look at the very specific word choice within the Bible or basically just my text. You mm -hmm. guys know about the Bible. <laughs> yeah, I've read it uh, a bunch of times, yeah. Yeah. And I found a lot of times there's deep parallels that people don't see, and I think oftentimes I'm I'm even in a bag on my own my own people here for a minute. <laughs> I think a lot of times scientists and Christians don't fully understand. They don't fully look for discernment and for understanding in the other person's side as well, and even sometimes deeply look into their own scripture to see if there are any parallels in the Book of Job. It says something about pulling and laying and spreading out the universe as it is, as it was a cloth. Right, I don't know if that's the d exact um, translation there. Mm -hmm. I can actually look it up if you'd like me to. No, we don't like. We wouldn't. I, I'll take your word for it on that's that. Good point. But yeah, so he talks <laughs> about basically laying it out and spreading it out as a cloth. And uh, what do we know? This is sort of just a basic little one. But what do we know from um, Einstein's theory of relativity and stuff like that? Space time can be bent, melded, and not melded, but rather formed and stretched and moved around and spread out and laid out almost like. A scroll or a cloth or something like that. So, so meaning, like it's uh, it's flat. Yeah, in a way, <clears throat> if you're looking from a different dimensional standpoint, because you know when we look at a piece of paper, that's in two dimensions, and we are within a third dimension, so we see it as flat from our own comprehension. And I feel like oftentimes there's a lot of, from my own understanding, from my own standpoint, there's a lot of wisdom as to scientific discovery and scientific understanding even within the Bible that people don't grasp because they're looking at it almost in a way where they they're not hold on let me let me kind of re rephrase this they're not looking to understand what people might have been describing with the words that only they know right so like if you talk about a ancient man looking at a spaceship what are they going to call it they're not going to call it a spaceship. They don't have the technology. They don't understand that yet. They don't know the math, the science, or anything about it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they call it that. So I often feel like sometimes there are some crude descriptions of things that uh, we've discovered a lot later about science and about even just the nature of the universe that are all kind of just within the wisdom of the Bible. I call that kind of my own understanding of divine words, but... Uh, even then, it could just, from your standpoint, if you're just looking at it, it could be, uh, it could be, just people seeing something and understanding something, or maybe even wisdom that we haven't discovered yet that someone else maybe did a lot earlier. Uh, do you? I, I'm, uh, since you were talking about the cloth and being flat, it kind of reminded me of something I read in the Bible where um, 
the words I can't remember where it is. A simple Google search can find this. It's and and I've already um, you know looked it up and it is it is written in there like that. But it's something uh, along the lines. I'm paraphrasing here that the Earth is like a plate. Yeah. So they're saying that the Earth is flat because back then when they were writing this book, um, that's what they believed. They believed that it was flat, so they didn't think that it was round or anything like that, or that it revolved around a sun and all that. So knowing that in your own book, um, doesn't it make you question that, you know, maybe this didn't come from a God, the the word of God, and more just from these men? Possibly some goat herders yeah. or something. And, and I can know see that. Went tonight. <laughs> I could see that, but also just sort of understanding from my own, my own research, my own deep dive into... Uh, physics and all of that that is theoretical um whenever i see something sort of like that i think of once again an ant on a piece of paper right an ant is on a piece of paper and let's say this is a two-dimensional ant and all it knows is it's two dimensions right forward backward left right well we are an ant on a piece of paper if you add another dimension i guess of space and movement within our own um, universe in our own world, we would seem flat if you could comprehend that. You know what I mean? So, right. Yeah, but I'm more like an ant on a basketball. The, yeah, but the, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I, I understand. There's a big difference mean. between the people who wrote the Bible, who thought they were on a flat piece of paper, and those today who know quite well that they're not. And I, I understand that. But I, I'm saying, from from the standpoint of, I'm going to make some assumptions here. Just kind of. Uh, Bear with me for the sake of argument. <laughs> uh, saying there is a God, saying that he is able to see all, right? How would he be able to see all? He'd have to see through everything or from another direction or a different standpoint. Well, from his point of view, if you're an all-knowing, all-seeing being, um, through there's something called the line branch fold theory of uh, dimensional space, which has to do with just directions of movement through time and stuff like that. Um, I'll kind of just paraphrase real quick. Every single time you draw a line or something like that, you draw a line from it to another point that is in a different direction or a different possible space of movement, um, you're creating a new dimension of, of action or of movement. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's really, it's, it's, it's very deep and kind of difficult for me to even explain at this moment. But, um, right. When it, when it comes to dimensional space in a way, there's up, down, left and right. And if you draw sort of lines in between different places, it's sort of a theory that this guy's been working on for a while. Um, you can actually look it up. It's called, I, I believe it's called the line branch fold theory. But um, this man talks about when you are moving through space or when you classify space within dimensions mathematically, um, once you reach a certain point, you begin to understand all forms of beginning and end and all, I guess, versions of reality that could be and do exist currently. Hmm. Uh, so right, when you're you losing kind of, a lot of our, our, our listeners, so what were you? And I, I should probably kind of <laughs> go back to the original point, but if you're someone or something, kind of just for the sake of argument, saying there is a creator or something like that, or something even out there, yeah, um, that is outside of our current dimension of space, and we're just an ant on a paper, they'd be seeing us as flat, in a way, and maybe that's the only way we can explain it using the basic crude language and crude even understanding of the people from back in the day. Okay, so so, so through your um, theory, little theory here, your your God, um, through with his divine word, sees us as like we're on a plate. He doesn't see it as a, a round world, so he describes it and we transcribe it. Uh, when I say we, I mean the people that wrote the, the book um, through his divine whatever. Um, they They transcribed it to be as flat as he's seen it is that why they describe it as flat well i definitely do believe it to be possible and that is why i kind of look for the wisdom within you know what i mean look to, to look have you ever tried to look for the wisdom with every religion you, you, you can, can look, yeah look, you definitely can have you ever tried to look for the wisdom without i have okay <laughs> just, just wondering <laughs> <laughs> no well i guess that's why we're here yeah it's true um but once again, I'm just offering a different standpoint. And that's yeah. a, a couple things sort of similar to that and similar like that. Even within the first couple uh, verses of the whole entire Bible, first ones, when you look at the story of cosmic inflation, the sort of the Big Bang, it's very parallel in a way. If you look almost with metaphorical mm -hmm. language. 
Hmm. You know what I mean? No, but no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't, I don't see it right. as uh, in line with any scientific uh, standpoint. Um, it, it really is kind well, of on the that, other end of the that's spectrum. The problem, though, isn't that a problem with um, one of the issues with the Bible is that you can pretty much make it mean whatever you want. It, it's a very easily manipulated script. You right. can, you know, I mean, people have done it for centuries. They've made it mean whatever they want it to mean. You know, God is love, but uh, slavery is okay. It says on the Bible, rape's okay. Right. It's Rape's in the okay. Bible. Yep. You beat, know, beat your women. You can make They're it less than you. What yeah. you want it to mean, because somewhere in there, it's it's there. It's, it's almost like a just in case we screwed up, let's cover our ass with this verse. <laughs> and I, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Um, but just to kind of get off of the scientific topic, because oftentimes it's difficult for me to even explain some of the things I've seen, the metaphorical kind of branches out there, um, and I might even be incorrect in some of my grasps at. Um, Connecting with some of the theoretical physics and cosmology commute. Did I say cosmology? Okay, cosmology. I said, co- yeah. I said cosmology. cosmology. <laughs> Study the early universe. Um, just, I might even be incorrect in some of my grasps, but um, the overall kind of thing about that is, I was I was in a point of doubt, um, and I searched and I looked and I kind of tried to see from both sides, and I still can see from both sides because I've experienced that. Um, but what really sold me as to being a Christian would have to be my uh, experience. And what, what does that mean exactly? Um, have you ever... I don't even know how to explain this. Have you ever just loved something? Um, and fully yeah. and you just, if, we're, we're both I dead, definitely like, you're gonna jump I, out of your <laughs> out of your chair and you just feel like your heart's on fire and you're just you're just ready to go. If if that thing that I loved uh, deserved it, yeah. You you feel like well, that? And let let me just let me just toss in here before uh, we get too far just so you know um although I'm a uh, warlock in the church of Satan at age 44, uh up until age 30 I was very involved in my church. I was a worship leader. I uh I I, I know all, all the stuff. I was the guy who people would come to in my church and say, hey, every time you pray for something, it happens, so will you pray for us? Uh, so, I mean, I I understand sensationalism quite well. Uh, now that I look at it as an outside perspective, I see it for what it is. So, Well, I, I'm not even talking about necessarily group sensationalism. No, um, I know, but fact, I, I, under, I understand that um, especially – um, and we kind of talked about this before, about uh, um, especially at your age, uh, there's a with youth there is definitely passion. We talked about this last uh, last week or two. Uh, we had a young girl that wanted to, she wanted to con- you know convert everyone in her neighborhood to, to Satanism. Uh, <laughs> teach them, and we're like, look, we no, get no, it. No. You know, at your age, you've got all this passion, and uh, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, I uh, admire that kind of you uh, kind of. Eventually, you, like, you calm down later on and go, "Yeah, I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit crazy there for a little bit." But. Because it's for the individual; it's not for everyone. We don't want everybody to join. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, I'm just yeah, well, saying, though, in general, like I understand, I understand at age 18 that that you have that, that passion now for something. And yeah, so, I so I get that. Like you know, you're you're this feeling of you know just. Like what you were just trying to describe, just jumping out of your chair and excited and love it's it's passion is what you have, yeah, and that's it's not unusual, and people have it for a lot of different things. Some people have it so much they would fly an airplane into a building. It's true they have that much passion for their religion it's very so, true i mean it's not it's not unusual, you know so yeah i'm not I'm not trying to fault you uh oh I that, understand I totally I, 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 I you're passionate. This, uh, I respect how you guys are uh, how you guys are dealing with me, even though I'm talking about something that uh, you might not like. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we definitely went off the subject, original, would, original subject. I, I, let me put this out there. Though. I'm not saying that we, you know, there, it, it's not that we don't like it. It's just that it's not it's not for us. You know, it's one of those yeah, things. Where, I, I mean, Islam is not for me. Um, not for me. Hinduism well, is not for a, me. That right. is a just, common misconception for us: is that a lot of people would just assume that by the title of. Uh, Satanists that were enemies of Christians, and I yeah. think John and I probably have plenty of Christian friends, and uh, yeah. many Satanists do. And oh, yeah. our feeling is, 
is typically one of um, live and let live. You know, if you're not bothering me, you know, honestly, like I, in fact, I've come to the point where I say I kind of am glad that there's Christianity because too many of those people they're not made for our religion, so <laughs> give them somewhere else to go. <laughs> yeah, we we wouldn't be wolves without the sheep, so we got to be yeah. able. To, yeah, there's got to be some <laughs> sheep out there. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, but there's a there's a there's a respect there that often gets twisted up by the media or whatever, uh, you know, corporation or something that's trying to make something uh, out yeah. to be what it is. We're not anti-Christian. So there might be Satanists that are anti-Christian for whatever their yeah. individual personal reasons are, but it's not a broad anti-Christian thing. It's you know people look like 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 Dorian said they take that dreaded S word and they go oh you you know you worship the devil or you you're on his side it's like no not like you think so yeah. we're not at war we're we're busy <laughs> living our own lives yeah it, and I respect kind of, that I'm I'm all about improving myself as well excellent yeah that's kind of uh, well I don't want to say that next well, I was gonna say it's kind of hard to do when you're a Christian if you want to improve yourself because you, you know what I mean by that is nothing offensive what I mean is that in in your religion that they, they you're not worthy of anything you know you're supposed to think that you have to be on your knees quite literally at times and you are the servant you there, how can you be any more special than that you know and it's just a it's one of those things well, can I can I ask you one sort of question? It's almost a little bit of a double sided question. You can ask me two sort of questions. Too. And this is this is how I see it in a way. <laughs> Think about your daughter or son. Yep. Both of you. I don't know. I don't know, Dorian. I don't know if you have <clears throat> any three kids, daughters. Right? You have Woo-hoo! three daughters. Yep. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. I only have two. Yeah. Full of daughters here that I know of, anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but would you say that your daughters deserve love from you? <clears throat> um, most days, yeah, they do. Would you say that yeah. they are your servants? I don't even know if it's, I don't even know if it's deserving. It's just, it just mm-hmm. is. They're, my daughter, my servants. It's not a, it's not a deserved um, thing. But no, you, you love them, right? I do love them. Yeah, and you I do anything for them. Um, no, I wouldn't do anything would, for them. No. Well, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> leave them like starving in a desert by the thousands, like you know. Yeah, God yeah does. You'd, you'd provide for them. You'd care for them. You love them. You like them being around. <laughs> yeah. right? Well, yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's a very broad thing that you're saying there. But if my, let's say my daughter came to me one day and I found out that she murdered someone, well, I'm probably the first one to make a phone call, okay? Because yeah, I understand that, that. that's not how we want things. But but I love her. I, I'll yeah. love her, you know, but she's going oh, fa- to face the music. Oh, see, now you just gave him room for hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, he just he so, just gave room for that. But I mean, God as general that. as He's general, fire. yeah, right. But as general <laughs> as the question is, um, I guess we can give you a general answer of of yes. So yeah, okay. All right. Well, I, I always see it this way, where I'm not on my knees begging for mercy and begging for <clears throat> the love of my dad. My dad loves me because he's my dad, and I love him because I'm his son. Mm-hmm. We have we have developed a relationship over my 18 years of existence. And I'm thankful for the life he's given me, for everything he's provided for me and everything he's done for me. And I almost just see God as that way to me, as but my dad. If you, if you said, uh, um, hmm. sorry, Dad, but I don't want to listen to you anymore. I'm going my own way. I don't love you. Would your dad then set you on fire for all eternity? <laughs> I mean, I'm really, I'm like, I'm like yeah, I, mean, I, got I, you. I, my, I mean, that's my, my view of it is that, um, God of the Bible is the most horrific version of a father that could ever be. Yeah, like, because just, just me personally, because I could never do that to my children. No matter what they did, I can never. Yeah, listen, set my l- on fire. Let me say this: in the story of Jesus, uh, God killed His only begotten Son. Yeah, right. He killed him mm-hmm. because the neighbor's kid's an asshole. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Who's, who's the neighbor's kids in this in this situation? The, the people of the earth. Oh, just the people the, of the, earth. the sinners. Yeah, I got you. So he 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 sacrificed his son, supposedly or allegedly. Well, um, for for the I sake of humanity's that. sins. My my issue with that is that um, that's that's one of the biggest things you hear people say is like you know he died for you the, the, the ultimate sacrifice. No, a soldier gives the ultimate sacrifice. He doesn't come back in three days. You know. <laughs> It's not the ultimate sacrifice. Sometimes he doesn't really, come I mean, back. Yeah. For God, I mean, he came back and then flew up to heaven. I mean, that's not a sacrifice. Well, if if I can just kind of jump back onto uh, the topic of you said, 
if if I looked at my dad and said, um, "Dad, I don't love you anymore. I'm going to go my own separate way, and I'm going to uh, never see you again. I'm going to renounce my family name and renounce everything." He wouldn't burn me in hell because, well, first of all, my dad doesn't have a furnace that big. I'm a pretty big guy. So you're saying five. if he had a, if he had a furnace that big, he would? <laughs> so if your dad was German, yeah. he would? No, I'm kidding. Oh, but... oh. Uh, no, but I'm I'm saying <laughs> you said yourself if if uh, your daughter murdered someone, you would be the first to make a phone call. Yeah, yeah this has to get straightened out. Every, yeah, every issue requires kind of a. I guess this is almost sort of Buddhist in a way, where you you have the idea of karma, where every action there is an equal and opposite reaction in a way. Uh, every discrepancy or law break, with the even within our own society, there's a punishment for it. Um, and you can you can talk about the the justification or the. Um, rationale behind eternal punishment for temporary um, sin every if I, if I can get back to what I was saying every action has an equal and opposite reaction every violation of a law has a punishment every judge gives a sentence be it fair or not sometimes there's an issue with that but um, you can talk about the punishment of eternal fire and eternal hell for a temporary sin all you want, but still, you have to get down to the idea and the rationale behind a judgment for a discrepancy or a judgment for a, a crime. Well, and even then, even well, then, when it comes to you guys' forms of morality and my form of morality, I think we might not even agree, and we might actually agree on a couple things. Especially, like, I mean, you kind of quoted uh, the whole "every action has a reaction," and we're talking about laws of nature. Um, yeah. God's supposed to be able to bend that. I mean, if he created it, he could change the rules if he wanted to, and he just doesn't want to. He's pretty logical, though, too, as well, in a way. And some might see it actually as illogical. But um, I guess everyone has their own uh, moral compass, and so does he. But, uh, yeah. I think we're going to have to change the topic of our show. Yeah, yeah This probably. is not about Satanism. This is about Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just touch on everything. Yeah. I hope I didn't make myself seem like too much of a uh, buffoon or a no. Fool. Well, you know what? No, we, I know you guys are professionals at state. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We asked. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was interested. But Is overall, it, sum it up. I'm just going to say one thing. I don't think Christianity, in my way of, uh, in my view of the world, right, in my view of how I treat everything in the world, I don't think Christianity is about judgment. And uh, I apologize to anyone who is listening who has been um, hurt by the church in any form, in any formal way. I don't think the church should be about people judging each other. We're told not to judge, right? Because we have the ultimate judge that's later on. This is sort of just in our beliefs. Um, but I believe Christianity should be more and more and more about love. Well, don't worry, because Let's, as Satanists, we judge everything and everyone. So <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry yeah, about we'll, it. <laughs> we'll give you guys the judging. <laughs> Who better to? So let's bring yeah. it back to Satanism then. Um, yeah, let's see it. Let's see what it. other questions do you have? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. So I asked about magic, right? Yes. All right, just making sure I cover that base. Um, so well, yeah, and that's actually what led John to ask you what you believe, which kind of took this tangent. So, John, why did you ask him? What is, what was the point you were getting at? Um, all questions during the of magic, based on what he believes. During in our contract, uh, your questions have to be submitted thirty days prior to answering. So <laughs> you're gonna have to. No, no, you <laughs> no I was cur- I was curious. You know, I'm just I'm just curious. Uh, so I just kind of just okay. wanted to know, just to, I, I guess to I give everyone an, uh, an understanding of where we're coming from. Him. So okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, you know, so I mean, I didn't know if he if he is a Buddhist, a, an atheist, a, you know. So we found out he's a Christian, and we kind of just went off on that road a little bit there. Yeah. All right. That long and windy road, but uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. And it was well, windy. Yeah. <laughs> I was lost for a couple minutes there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Almost ran into a guardrail, but um, yeah. Yeah. So let's hit. Uh, let's get back into your outline there and move on with the next question. Alrighty. So um, I saw in a bunch of things that I've seen through just sort of my research and things like that, um, that you guys don't necessarily take a political stance. And I know that a lot of religions and a lot of groups and a lot of political parties, every sort of congregation of individuals usually takes a stance, uh, but you guys don't. And I actually, I kind of like that a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
because it allows you guys to sort of co-mingle and figure things out and be open. Well, I mean, but we don't. Have, we, sorry, have you noticed? Oh, it's all good. Have what? you noticed any political sightings or trends towards any uh, any, I guess, side, red or blue, libertarian, Democrat, Republican, well, anything? Well, just to, I wanted to comment on. Libertarian, but. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to comment on your thing there. We we don't do it collectively. Um, yeah. Satanism is about yeah. individuality. So yeah. Dorian might have an individual political stance, and he might have a certain level of activism that he chooses as an individual to participate in, and it, it'll be different from everyone else's. Well, that's the beauty of it. Um, but uh, collectively, we don't do things together under the guise of Satanism. We are Satanists, so uh, we, we don't want your Ten Commandments at this uh, building. Duh. <laughs> I mean, it's just so stupid and unsatanic, yeah. but yeah. So just to clear that up. All right, I got you. Yes. Yeah, it really so, does come down to that. To like, you know, whatever a person thinks, and and if you look at, like, I noticed this through looking at um, uh, Facebook newsfeed, and I have, you know, so many uh, <clears throat> fellow COS members on my Facebook newsfeed who, you know, you you go through like one post is is totally. You go with Donald Trump, and then the next post is totally, you know, we need Hillary, and the next post is go Bernie, and the next post is all these people suck, go Gary Johnson. You know, it's 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 really all over the place because um, as individuals, we all have different <clears throat> needs and different things that we feel are going to benefit us, and that's really what it comes down to is what's going to benefit us the most. So, uh, you know, to the church definitely can't pick a side because – um, the, the the church is the members, and the members are all individuals. All righty. Um, but yeah, I was, I was sort of just asking, because I know you said people tend to side toward libertarian. I know you guys value individuals. <laughs> a lot of them do. Yeah. Uh, but I was, just, I was just wondering if Satanists as a whole kind of side towards a typical set of beliefs, and I guess... Uh, Good question. Or, uh, I don't know how beliefs, that could be answered, but, uh, though, you know. affiliations. Yeah, there's no really no way to answer that because we'd have to ask each individual yeah. Satanist where they where they stand on that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it really is a wide gamut, you know, and and uh, uh, you know every even every political issue that you see. I mean, the same the same topics like you know whether <clears> it be um, uh, right now, of course, there's always the the gun control uh, topic, and the same thing. You look at all the the COS uh, you know members on Facebook and their posts are. are One's totally we gotta stop guns, and ones we need more guns, and it's just you know it's it's all over the place. So again, you know, it really is gonna depend on each individual. So there's no real way to attach one political party or even even to a majority. I mean, I mean, like you said, you know, like I've I've heard plenty of people say libertarian, but you know, right now, of course, most people's talk seems to revolve around two people, but there's not one chosen uh, for certain. You can't you can't represent the Church of Satan because of that individuality is what makes it what it is. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. And that's, that's actually, Oh my gosh, I just messed up that word right there. Uh, but we're going to keep going. That's actually, I think very American in a way. Hmm. Uh, loving think, individuality, actually. independence. Yeah. I've actually thought about this a lot. Um, ever since kind of knowing you guys and your family, John, um, mm -hmm. I thought that's, that's actually very American in a way. Yeah, kind of oh, yeah. picking up yourself up by your bootstraps and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I think I think if you if you really look at um, you know what Satan represents for us, uh, I mean, number one, I mean, talk about people who who left, you know, uh, oppression, looking for for freedom to start this country. I mean, uh, he he's he's like the ultimate symbol of it. You know, it kind of yeah. just makes sense. And, yeah, the whole spirit of rebellion and and yeah. Absolutely. Yearning to be free, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and I mean, talk, how how much more American can you be than we're not going to kneel to you know somebody else? I mean, that's yeah. that's our attitude, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are pretty American out there, <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> All right, so um. I was reading through, and also once again within the nine sins, I saw stupidity, and they were talking sort of about ignorance, mm -hmm. and how ignorance is technically better, or you're better off to be ignorant than stupid. What would be the 
overall discerning factor or decider between ignorance and stupidity? Well, ignorance is a lack of knowledge. Being unaware. Yeah. All right. So, so that's you know, we we were all of us are ignorant until we learn something, until we are made, you know, something's made known to us. Stupidity is something that you do that's dumb, and you should have fucking known better. But what if you did not know better? As well, well, then that would be ignorance. That's ignorance, yeah. That okay, so if you do know, it's con- okay. I guess. Yeah, okay. I you, yeah, you, you're well aware that it's uh, illegal uh, to murder someone, and you do it. That's pretty stupid. Yeah. All that's right. severely stupid, actually. But. Yeah. <laughs> and and if there was some weird chance that you didn't know that murdering is wrong, uh, that's ignorance. But you're still going to pay the you're still going to pay the price, but. Yeah. Um, and again, that's severe. You should you should know that should be one of the first things your parents teach you. <laughs> yeah, killing is bad. Don't kill people, please. Elmo, unless says, it's in war. Don't kill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Um, well, in kind of a world in a society, because I've noticed you can trace it back to Gandhi, you can trace it back to Martin Luther King, in a world of peaceful protest and peace and sort of like love wins all love breaks through all barriers even currently within the um the lgbt movement um how do you guys sort of view and how do you guys sort of carry yourself within a world where everyone values protests and i guess sacrifice of oneself for a greater cause when it comes to you you think everyone values that i would say a lot of people do even even if they don't feel mm. it directly themselves, they respect it. Hmm. From what I've seen in the world. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe you could see it see it some more or something. I I can't. Uh, yeah, I haven't see seen that. that. I don't I haven't seen that at all. Um, yeah, well, I've never I've never heard someone call Martin Luther King or Gandhi uh, a bad man for what they did. So oh, sure, there's people it's out there that, that can't stand yeah. them. Really? <laughs> yeah, there's there's people out there that don't like. Uh, yeah. KKK doesn't like uh, Martin Luther too much. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Well, other, other than the groups that are <laughs> that harbor hatred towards, other them. than the people that don't like them, I'm talking or about people that do. Yeah, didn't like uh, Indian independence. <laughs> well, and yeah, you you know, naming one or two people as uh, you know, we all think that they were pretty nice people. That's fine, but uh, you know, I don't I don't think that that means that everyone thinks we should be that way. Obviously, I mean, I mean, I mean, drive on the highway with people. They they don't, they don't think that we should all get along. They fucking drive <laughs> like assholes. <laughs> Road rage. It's funny. <laughs> you know, you know, what I mean, like it's one thing to it's one thing to give lip service to it. I think that is that's the standpoint that we uh, we are pretty stern about is uh you know not wearing a good guy badge just because you say oh yeah we all believe this but if you don't live it then you don't really believe it we don't, we don't all really believe that right. you know there's certain things that you know i mean we can all say like yeah i think uh you know martin luther that that's great um you know it doesn't really have a big impact on me i have nothing against it but i mean as far as like do i think that everyone needs to be the same way no you know i mean it's not really affecting my life but how yeah. would how would you guys view um, peaceful protests in a way? I know Satanism is not really about political activism very very often. Um, no, it's not at all. We, not we, at we, all. We were talking about uh, John. We were talking about on the phone the other day how you said yeah. a lot of those uh, other groups that call themselves Satanists or the media calls them Satanists mm-hmm. are uh, often doing the activism. And you guys don't usually like that, right? How do you how do you view? Um, I guess my question is to you, is peaceful activism better than violent? Um, I would say, I, yeah, I, but I mean, what's I, your... Definition? Generally, yeah, but I, I think it really depends because if, like, let's say there's people in Africa that are being, or even in Iraq over there with, or Iran and things with these with these religious zealots uh, and, and, and extremists taking over towns and villages and, and killing them uh, at will and doing their things... I don't think a peaceful protest is going to do it. You know what I mean? I think you have to fight yeah. back and get a little violent. So I think it depends on the scenario or the situation. Um, and, and we'd have to answer that based upon a specific um, example. Like, Well, for example, uh, you could say that uh, these people who are um, 
blocking up highways are peaceful protests. And I would run those fuckers over so fast. <laughs> Fuck all of them. I hope they all fucking die. Yeah, you know? yeah, because because it's actually stupid <laughs> <laughs> stupidity for them to be on yeah. the highway. Okay? You know you shouldn't yeah. be there. It's not yeah. my fault if I run them over. So if I don't understand the people that are in the front that are making us all stop, if I was in the front, I I would probably beep my horn at least. Something push push through slowly or something, but because <clears> the problem with that is like, and, and again, you know, maybe that's not the example you're talking about, but somebody could refer to that as a peaceful protest. And the problem with that <clears> is that their protest then affects somebody who is running late for work who is going to get fired because he's running late, and he's affecting some uh, mother who's trying to pick up her child who is in trouble and needs assistance, and somebody who's pregnant kid needs yeah. the hospital or right. something. I mean, you know. They're they're actually doing you know being peaceful. They're actually causing harm. Yep. So, you or, know, or inviting not, violence. Uh, now a peaceful protest that's you know uh, off to the side. You know it, it's in its own location and it's not bothering anybody. And they want to just do their thing. They want to have their voice be heard. I don't see a problem with it. I certainly don't have an issue with it because I'm probably not going to be there because I don't give a fuck. So go ahead, go for it. It's it's kind of like the same th- difference with you know have a peaceful protest or have church service. I don't care. You're not in my house, so go ahead. I yeah. think that's how it, I think that's how most pe- how most Satanists would probably feel about that. As long as it really is, like we said, you know, peaceful and not getting in the way of other people's yeah. lives because it shouldn't be forced on somebody. It should be, uh, hey, we're going to hold this event. If you want to come, fine. You know, not not <laughs> blocking up the highway, you know. <laughs> yeah, I have a very uh, not in my backyard attitude about it. Um, <laughs> if they're doing it out there, they're protesting or they're causing violence and there's riots or this and that. As long as it's not in my backyard, I'm pretty good because I don't yeah, have anything yeah. to do with it. It's not affecting me. Um, if they come into my neighborhood and it starts to affect me and my loved ones, I probably have an issue with that. Yeah. So, exactly. Because there's there's a lot of heinous things happening in the world. Why we're, we're we're talking and having this conversation, uh, thousands of women have been raped. So thousands of men have been raped. Babies have been killed. Innocent people they're dying right now, and nobody's speaking up about that. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so who really gives a fuck, Grant? You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of times I do. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? You know what I mean? That's the thing. Yeah. Like, these people sit there. They want to cry and hold up a sign, and you get mad when you rip it, and you know. Hey, <laughs> and it's all this crying and everything. It's like, it's like, you know, who wants change? We do. Who wants to change? Crickets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's just about it's about doing something. You can sit there and bitch and moan in a in a in a group and yell and scream and start to throw shit and act like stupid assholes. But what are you going to do? You're not doing anything. You're actually, you're you're hurting your cause. So the yeah. best you you yeah. don't like a law, change it. There's these there's 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 steps to changing it. Yeah. Use some of that lesser yeah. magic. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Listen uh, to you. You're, you're right. Listen to yeah. you. Learning <laughs> you've, already. You've been researching. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually funny. <laughs> All right. What else uh, you got? So I, I kind of, I say this one sort of for the last, I guess. Okay. Uh, I just have a question as to where, you, I guess really more of a, a discussion statement, as to where you guys sort of stand over morality and absolute morality and really just kind of what is morality because I know you guys value an in, indulgence. Um, and where does indulgence stop? Ooh, can I take the morality oh, thing? Yeah, yeah go for uh, it. Yeah, because I get a, I'm on I'm on a panel uh, at at a couple of colleges and, and and stuff sometimes, and I always get asked that morality question. Um, you know, where are your morals then? You know, if you're if yeah. you don't believe in God or if you don't do this and and you're not a, a, a Jesus's butthole, you, you, where's your morals? You know, your morals. I mean, and it's like, wow. But the thing is. Morality can't be legislated, and I don't mean just by men's laws. It can't be legislated at all because what's good for me might be bad for you and vice versa. You know, you say, well, thou shalt not kill. You shouldn't kill somebody. Well, if I'm getting beat up by a, a few guys and I'm, I'm in fear for my life, I'm going to kill them. Now I just committed a sin and I have to go to hell to stop them from hurting me. That's so stupid to me. So my morality is going to be different than someone who goes, I would just let it happen and turn the other cheek. Yeah, probably your ass cheek. But the thing is, it's like you can't you can't legislate that you know you can't say something's universally good and something's universally bad here's how i how I define good and bad what i like is good and what i don't like is bad but what if what you like is good for you but bad for another 
does that make it bad or does it, it make in it what good? way? Like if I like um, watching The Walking Dead and someone hates that show um, by me watching Stay it, home. it stays on. You know, it, 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 is that really bad? Is it a universal bad thing for me to watch the show because I enjoy it? I mean, what do you what do you mean? Can you give me an example of something that might? Well, I really mean more like if someone enjoys the higher the rush of stealing, but stealing harms another person. Where where does that? Right. Well, we have, we have a well, legal system for that. Right for yeah. things like that. Yeah. I mean, you, but you, even yeah. even if someone did not know or someone didn't report it and it was not put into the legal system, would that be just kind of passed over? And uh... well, if someone's stealing and nobody knows about it. Um, I don't think there's any, the only harm that's going to be done is probably that person's red line at the end of the month or something, but, uh, I'm sure they'll come up with ways to stop that from happening themselves. But if he's, if he's doing it and getting caught, he'll pay the price. I mean, you know, yeah, most now, as far as, as far as what you're asking, as far as, you know, like for, for Satanists, I mean, most Satanists agree that, um, legal is, uh, you know, the law is, is the line. You know, like we, we believe that, you know, we believe in law and order. We believe that we need law and order to, to keep us all living the lifestyle that we want to live. So, you know, if it's against the law, then that's not really an issue for us. I mean, we, we, we agree to that. We live here. We, we abide by the laws that are here. Yeah. So right. stealing, that's not, that's, that's very much not satanic. Right. If you, if you think about it, the people that are stealing out there, uh, they're not Satanists. Isn't that strange? They're usually yeah. passing a plate. <laughs> <in the church. laughs> uh, yeah, those are the. Uh, By the way, Church of Satan actually pays taxes, unlike uh, other churches. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I think that's that's interesting. I like oh, that. I'm, I'm prob- there's probably a lot of interesting things you'd find. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, there was some, a second part to your question, though. You said moral morality, and then there was another part. I'm I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, I believe it was about absolute morality. Where does that start and end? Like, what what is? Oh, okay. Because yeah. well, there's, John kind there's of a lot of argument about this. Thing. What'd you say, Victoria? I said you just kind of covered that by by saying that you can't really have an, an absolute because what's good for you is going is not going to be good for somebody else. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, you could you could say certain things like you could say yeah, killing, but then again, if, if it's in self defense and you need it, that that's. I mean, there's there's always a reason. There's always. No matter what you come up with, there's always something that's going to make you go, ah, but what about this situation, you know? And so no, and you, yeah. Oh, continue on. With what I'm just going to say, well, if you have a question for Dorian based on what he said, go for it. I'll, I'll remember. All right. Um, I was just going to say, if you were to say that, um, let, me, let me find a way how to say this. If you were to say that absolutely all forms of morality are determined by the context of what they're, of what they're in, that would be something that you would agree with. So context determines morality, basically. And then on um, top of that, the law. The law, it takes precedence over that. The law is yeah, first. Yeah. yeah, the law takes precedence yeah. over that. We, we, we obey the laws. Um, but, then, but then outside of the law, if it's not breaking any laws, then yeah, it would, be a, it would be based upon a certain context of a certain situation or something. And right. I, I, here's the thing I was going to say. I'm talking uh, about things like abortion or homosexuality. Is that the kind of stuff that we're talking about or? I guess you could bring it to that side if you'd like. I don't, I don't have any issues with that. Yeah, to yeah about those that. are definitely. Uh, yeah, well, those are for us definitely issues where it's it's just simply about the law. But that um, we would we would absolutely say if you know if you're not hurting others, then do what you want in the privacy of your own home. Yeah. Yeah, but you do, like like um, there are people out there that think that abortion is universally evil. And you're killing a soul and all this other stuff. Um, no. The thing, the bottom line is, you're not hurting anyone. It's not a. We don't believe it to be a soul. I mean, if it's if it's lawful in your area to to have an abortion, you should have an abortion. What's what is the? Well, what, why is it an issue? Want- <laughs> yeah, if you want one. <laughs> Everyone should have abortions. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but what I find is something I mean, when I go on those panels, a lot of the time I feel or, I, or I, I realize that these people that are asking about the morality question are the ones that are fearful of Satanism for whatever reason it is. They're, they're like, well, if you're going to live uh, in my neighborhood or next door to me, I mean, are you going to hurt me? Because, 
you you don't have any morality. You know, that those yeah. are the ones that are just <laughs> fearful of things like that. And if they really did some research, they'd find that the Satanist is the one that's not going to hurt them unless they deserved it. You know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's so it's it's really well, yeah, simple. I mean, the the, the uh, prisons in this country aren't full of Satanists, so yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, that, that's just a fact. You know? Yeah, and it's funny how a lot of people that go there find yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're at the lowest point in your life, there he is for you. But yeah, uh, yeah we don't. So you get so you bond out. <laughs> yeah. What was that new word backslide you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's not new, son. <laughs> well, it's new to him. It's new to him. So backsliding. Yeah, I guarantee if you go to go to your church and ask like some of the older people there, like, have you ever heard the term backsliding? They're all gonna go, of course. <laughs> it's awesome. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been been involved, but yeah. How many years would you say? How many what? How many years would you say? Just curious, uh, out of curiosity. Uh, well, let's see. Well, I guess I'm 44 now, so I guess I've been uh, done with that lifestyle for about 13, 14 years. All right. And I've been uh, I've been uh, a member of uh, Church of Satan for eight. Um, and you know, I consider myself so a little before that as well. But it took you know. Uh, same thing, kind of a lot of uh, reading and uh, studying, and I, I don't want to use the word soul searching, but you know, <laughs> you can use kind of, it as a euphemism. Of myself, like. going, oh, you know, uh, let's start, let's start making sense. And uh, I, you know, there's a joke amongst atheists that uh, they, they say that uh, you know most Christians have read you know a portion of the Bible, and most atheists have read all of. <laughs> you know, when you read some of the horror it's it's easy to assign love when you want to but when you read some of the horrific uh old testament stories that jesus said still apply in law then he's a sick dude, a sick dude. <laughs> yeah no thank you <laughs> that's funny so that's all you got for us grant um i think that's all the questions i had written down if you guys would just like to talk about stuff uh I'm totally well, I mean, out. as long as we're, I mean, we should probably at least, I guess, maybe talk more about some of the, since we kind of addressed this as a show introducing Satanism, uh, I don't know, should we address more of what it? we seem to kind of cover it when we talk about pseudos and stuff like that a lot on the show. Yeah, but. As far as, uh, at least we, we address what it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, just a quick question. Yeah. Um, both of you said you were from Christian homes, mm-hmm. right? Catholic well, on mine, but Christian yeah. or Catholic? Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Well, some people might say I, I don't agree yeah. with that. Yeah, well, most, Christians, yeah. most Christians don't, but I don't Catholics believe in a lot of institutional. What's the difference in a Christian? You just see the cross, but in a Catholic uh, church, you go. There's an well, actual Christians, body on the cross. What do you? What is it? Christians don't have like the you know they they would say that you don't pray to a priest or you don't have a you know Jesus is supposed to be the go between, so you don't have a uh, a guy in a row beat the go-between. Yeah. And, I'm all, uh, I'm just all about personal relationship with God. So I believe right. Jesus is actually Lucifer in that story. Really? Yeah. He's, it, uh, I might've said this before on another show, but they're both called the called the morning star. Uh, Lucifer said, I will raise my throne above God. And I think Jesus has done just that. Um, I will be like the most high. I think Jesus has done just that. Um, yeah, man. I think Jesus is actually Lucifer and he's deceived the nations, like it says in the Bible. Well, is it being like or is it being? Because I believe he I'm, says, I, I think am he's the being. Most high. Because he, he, levi- says, he levitated like a demon of, over the water. He, he commanded other demons and they listened to Lucifer to come out of the ping, uh, out of the p- person going to the pigs. Uh, yeah, man. I just, all these different things I can go off on about Jesus and Lucifer just being the one and the same. Well, people actually thought that back in the day. They thought he was a. Uh, they came to him, I believe, and they said, "Jesus, you talk to these demons. You must be basically one of them." You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, "Nah, he dude." He said, "A house standing against <laughs> itself." Yeah, they were on to him back then. Itself, <laughs> well, what are you doing? I, I Duct just, taping something? No, nah, my desk kind of wiggled a little bit. Oh. Made a noise. <laughs> I just always see it as sort of like, uh, if you got your enemy in a chokehold, they'll do whatever you want them to do. But that's just me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, 
So if I'm if I'm already going to win the battle, and I'm just kind of postponing it all, or if I've got the person in a chokehold, they're not tapping out yet. They'll pretty much do whatever whatever I want them to. So that's that's how I always saw it with Jesus, kind of commanding the spirits, whether you want to believe it or not. So Jesus was the one in the chokehold or the one chokeholding? The one chokeholding. Huh. Just sort of, sort of like, a, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to say right there. I saw his body on the cross. If you put me in a chokehold, I probably can get out of it, dude. <laughs> You're going to put the, what nails what? through me? I don't think so. We're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put you in a full Nelson. I don't think so, bro. <laughs> Slam. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you've seen the pictures. Jesus is way skinnier than you, dude. And what was a white dude doing over there in the Middle East back then anyway? <laughs> I think that's oftentimes a lot uh, kind of misconstrued and uh, kind of painted on just... the white face and stuff like that. Um, Jesus was, even if you kind of just state him as a, a historical figure, he would have to be a Jewish man. So he's probably just kind of huh. Middle Eastern. Well, and since the beginning of man, we've always made our gods in our image. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times, even I would say it's almost kind of like a, a racial thing because what kind of white man wants to look up and see a uh, Middle Eastern man as their savior? <laughs> so wow, sees kind of it kind of shows you how far um, a lot of the churches have come from the original love of what uh, Christianity was supposed to be. From my from my point, so of view. you believe that you can love everyone? Wait, didn't, he, didn't he say I didn't? I didn't. Uh, he didn't. Jesus say that he came to uh, cause division between families and to. Uh, uh, bring that he brought a sword yeah no, it's not all love i mean he came to fight called the uh, called the uh money guys a, a brood of vipers back yeah. then them's fighting woids. within the temple yeah them's fighting woids <laughs> well uh we think about tough love in a way and i know kind of we're we're getting off the topic of you guys this whole show that's what we do all the time no, you're, you're, you're fine dude don't worry <laughs> Um, tough love in a way comes through um, like disciplining a child, um, which I guess in the end leads them sort of being a better person. Um, and you can you can call it over discipline, under discipline, not doing the right thing. But oftentimes, hmm. I I can't begin to comprehend the uh, very nature of my own God. So how can I understand His direct intentions and ideas? You know what I mean? A man that's mo- much smarter than me and uh, probably a lot wiser would probably know a little bit more than me. So, hmm. See, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I would have thought that if I was like an all-knowing God, I would have realized that after making the first two people that they were going to fuck everything up and I was going to have to drown it all in a flood and have to start all over and just kind of skip those steps. But <laughs> Wait, so, <laughs> yeah, wait, so the story? <laughs> wait, Grant, you believe in the story of Noah, right? <laughs> yeah. So you think that we're all the incestual uh, uh, offspring of Noah's family? Ouch. Uh, you, or or that, so that penguins I, walked from Antarctica down to... <laughs> up on a boat. And well, I, saw, I, I saw a painting of it, too. There was two male lions. Isn't that weird? I have an interesting theory about that, actually. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with Ken Ham? Yeah, unfortunately. Did you say canned ham? Ken Ham, the guy who built the oh, who tried to with Bill Nye and everything, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I really don't think he did a great job with that debate. I watched all of it, and I was kind of cringing. He was horrible. It. Yeah. He, he was just trying to re recapture the word science for Christians instead of mm-hmm. actually debating through that whole thing. But um, through sort of some, some research and uh, looking into that, I do see a little bit of validity almost in a way of his theory of kinds seeing that many animals can come from a few genus or even close group. Yeah, they have a they have so, a word for that. I think yeah, it's, it's evolution. Evolution. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that to a uh, to, to a creationist. <laughs> they don't like that. And I'm I'm not going to deny that changes do occur and survival of the fittest does happen. Um don't tell anyone at your church you think that. It, and it all happened in 6,000 years? Oh my, that's that's another thing I've got to uh talk maybe at another time but uh or how much how much time do we have it's our show we take as much time as we want oh oh sweet well, everyone like, might not be listening at this point but it's cool <laughs> they're like oh this guy <laughs> you sound a little bit weird in the first part of it and he's talking about his personal relationship with jesus that kind of tuned out <laughs> yeah, who knows you know? anybody who's stuck with us this long will 
stick it out to the rest of the way, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe they'll uh, they'll stop right about now as we're telling them to stop subconsciously. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, so when it when it comes to the age of the universe, um, there was a scientist back in the day. I don't know if I'm getting all of my information correctly because I heard this a long time ago, and I did a little bit re- of reading up on it. But he calculated through um, the theory of relativity. You guys know about the theory of relativity, correct? Yes. Where yep. when you're traveling at a certain speed or a certain rate, time dilates and slows down. Yep. Well, he uh, he calculated the average estimate of the age of the universe, given kind of the whole dark matter expansion and galaxies moving away, um, and he found that we're both right. Thirteen point seven, I believe, is uh, thirteen point seven billion years. What they say. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Um, and seven days roughly, are the age of the universe when it comes to with and without time dilation. I might be incorrect on what I just said, though, so you have to do your own research to check that out. Just, just, w- sure just one, sure one right. random scientist thought this and no other scientists have went, oh, yeah, that might be. Well, a couple other people have gone through it, but I'm not sure if they, um, once again, I'm, I'm just going off of what I remember from quite a while ago, so I don't know if they... Uh, went through it a lot with a couple others or if one guy just found it published it and people kind of ignored him or passed him over as a uh, lunatic so <laughs> <clears throat> but tesla was a lunatic too so aren't we all yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but a one too <laughs> <laughs> all righty awesome i think uh, i think this was pretty cool yeah i had some fun with you guys thank I you uh, for letting me on your show definitely we are now devils you know and um <laughs> 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 go with god don't take any wooden nickels uh <laughs> yeah yeah no, seriously grant thanks for coming on man we'll uh maybe yeah, you know, being a good sport yeah yeah you, uh, people <laughs> might want to hear you hear more of you and i'll let you know if that happens maybe maybe i can prepare a little bit next time too because uh i've had quite a busy and hectic week so what's that prepare a little bit more things <laughs> but yeah, okay. <laughs> more things, not a little bit more things, but you know. Yeah, and you know good, I mean. good luck in your research. Thank you very much. All right, you guys have given me some things to look into as well. Awesome. Until next time, everyone. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. Hail Satan.